Right. The one uh, the item which I actually thought I'd be spending the bulk of my time on today. This is, you've probably seen, um, you've probably seen the articles in the papers, well, or, or in the varying um, news websites and all the rest about the new uh, green energy funds. And, you know, it was the big advertisement of replacement to 12J, we now have the green energy fund, da, 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 da. Yeah. So what we have with solar is 12B. And now 12B is a truly fantastic little provision in the Income Tax Act, right? And it allows you to deduct 100% of any asset that is used for used in my trade, it is brought into the use for the first time by the taxpayer to generate photovoltaic solar power. Right. If you want the, if you want the full full wording for it, if you go and have a look in the, um, oh, sorry, if you go and have a look in the actual legislation, you can pick up the wording in 12B, and the exact wording re refers to the generation of photo um, photovoltaic part <laughs> photovoltaic powder. Good power. Good grief. Okay, this is where the flu and flu and big words do not do not gel well. Right. So the exact provision is here: machinery, plant, implement, utensil, article owned by the taxpayer or acquired by the taxpayer, in terms of an da 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 da, and which was or is brought into use for the first time by the taxpayer for the purpose of his his or her trade, to be used by that taxpayer in the generation of electricity from. And then we are looking here particularly photovoltaic solar energy. Right. So the question, um, the question in this is to go and say, right, where does the solar system start and where does the solar system end? Right. There are two primary points that I think is worth going, um, having a conversation having a conversation about here. And this is to go and say, this is one of those, um, areas of law, 12B and the photovoltaic section has been in the law for almost 10 years. In fact, yeah, it's pretty much 10 years now. It's just, it's no one's really used it much. So therefore, there's not been that many people that have they haven't been that there hasn't been that much debate about the actual meanings of the words. So we are there is an element in this where there is still going to be uncertainty, where there is going to be some finding of feet as people start coming up with varying varying new definitions. Essentially, if we look at the line item. If we think about the closest equivalent we have under law, it's probably a process of manufacture. And the question of where does a process of manufacture start and where does a process of manufacture end? And different systems are going to have different outcomes, which is why it's quite difficult to make blanket statements such as batteries can never be included and inverters must always be included from the con um, from my calculation. The reason why I'm saying is it's not that easy is because of the fact that the different systems work differently, and in some the inverter is integral, and in others it's not. So to give you an example, I have a um, I have solar at home as well. But the way my particular solar system works is I have a hybrid inverter and that hybrid inverter is got three different inputs. So I can take from grid, 
I can plug my solar panels in and then there's a third. So I can plug a Jenny in there, I could plug wind power in there, I could plug whatever I want in there. However, the software that controls the inverter, both in terms of fail safes and other bits and pieces, if I do not have batteries attached to that inverter, my solar panels don't work. I'm not going to even pretend I am not an electrical engineer as to why that is. I just know it is. <laughs> okay. You can argue that yours works differently. Very happy for you. Yours, yours probably does work differently. Okay. I'm just, I, that is how mine works. So for me, I very much am 110% comfortable making the argument that with my system that I have at home, my batteries are integral to my power generating units because without those batteries my inverter doesn't actually let the solar panels produce power it doesn't actually feed into the grid it doesn't store anywhere it can't feed back it doesn't power the house it does not work because essentially the inverter uses the batteries to help regulate the power that comes out the solar panels that's my understanding of how it works okay right now in that case then arguing that the batteries are not part of my system that generates power, I think is disingenuous. I'll also be the first person to admit, to go and say, I could probably get away with one or two batteries. I don't need enough batteries to go totally off grid to be able to generate my power. So, you know, where does the storage, and it's a similar problem sometimes in manufacturing, at what point have you, do you go from the place of, I need to put my, work in progress some way that storage is part of my process of manufacture to I'm now actually creating overflow and we've moved from us moved away from process of manufacture into just straight storage and logistics and distribution. It's in the same way that if you just simply have an inverter with a battery backup which you power off grid that inverter is not being used in the generation of solar power. That, generate, that inverter is not going to be deductible because it doesn't qualify for 12B. There's no generation of photovoltaic power. But without my inverter, I can't generate the power. Without the cables, without the fittings on my roof, without all those other bits and pieces, I cannot generate power. And this is definitely something where there is still a lot of scope for clarification. And I can see a lot of case law starting to come up with um, the, yeah, with exactly where that line is going to be drawn. The closest we have in terms of um, actual, actual deductible, there is a, Binding private ruling, which was uh, issued with res in 2018 already, with respect to um, with respect to solar power, it was BPR. I thought it was 113, but I'm thinking now it's 131. <laughs> I'll go and put it into the notes again as well. But essentially, where they had gone in terms of that ah sorry 311. Thank you. Um, where this exact question had been addressed by addressed by SARS. There we go, photovoltaic energy plants. So BPR 311. And what can be included and not and cannot be included. And essentially, if you go and look at the descriptions, it tells you what can and can't be, right? And the ruling in this one was. can be claimed. See, look there. It's the solar panels, the inverter, the combiner box, the racking, the cables, and the wiring could all be claimed. Right. This one didn't specifically go and add, discuss batteries in terms of the, the binding private ruling, but it does provide credence to the argument that we're looking at, what do I need in order for this thing to be able to generate solar power? Okay, so this is definitely, this would definitely be a, um, <clears throat> worthwhile 
And I think for a lot of people who are looking at the, yeah, this is definitely also, I think, for those of us who are working from home and also especially with stage six becoming a bit of a reality and the increases in electricity costs, being able to claim 100% deduction up front, I think makes it makes for a very, very good, um, yeah, makes it makes sense. It actually does just, in my mind, make sense. And it does mean that your big expenses is that um, you can go and claim this. Now, the question is, can we claim 12B for my home office expense? Right. Now, this is where it starts getting a little bit messy, <laughs> if I can call it that way. Remember, Section 12 Cap B says I can claim the allowance where the asset is used for in my trade. And the problem that I have, especially on the home offices, home office expense side, is if you are using a, if you've put up a solar system at home, the chances that you are only using it for your office is slim to none. I would be very uncomfortable saying that you could that you could take a hundred percent of the cost and claim that as a tax deduction. I would very much agree that you would need to do an apportionment, right? As to exactly how you should do the apportionment, that's really going to depend on what you uh, on what you use it for. So, for example. There was an example I was given of a, and this is, you'll see it comes up a little bit later, of a dental, of a dentist who put in solar at home because to make, you know, the dental technician, so like the molds and the, um, and the plates and the sort of crowns and all that kind of stuff, those machines can't just be turned on and off. They have to go constantly and they're obviously quite power intensive. So that would be, <clears throat> that would very much be something where you could probably make a pretty decent argument that the majority of the cost should be deductible because it's easy to, sh to demonstrate that, look, my actual office equipment or my working equipment consumes 90% of my power bill. Okay, I'm pulling numbers out of thin air here. So I should be able to claim 90% of the, of the cost. For the rest, probably the square meterage would be a standard and easy and simple if it's just the straight office that we're looking at. Okay. Please bear in mind, though, that when we are looking at trade, there's no restriction here in terms of the type of trade that it can be for. So if you put in solar for your investment property so that your tenants have power and that they you know, are more likely to rent from you, that absolutely would count because you're earning rental income from it and you put the solar in to help earn you income. Okay, that's it. In fact, in the rental property, the investment property, it's actually probably easier than your home because you can say, well, look, 100% of the cost relates to my trade being the rental of the property. Right. What? We, um, so please bear in mind, if all you've done is bought an inverter with batteries, that does not qualify for 12B. Why? Because 12B requires the generation of photovoltaic power. So no, if you've just bought an inverter with batteries, you cannot claim 12B for that. In order to, you can still claim an allowance on that, but it would have to be under 11E. It would not be 12B. So you also need to keep in mind that even if we don't get the accelerated allowance, which is obviously really nice, it doesn't mean we can't claim 
allowances at all. It would just come through in 11E. Now, the one thing that I would ha I would be incredibly surprised by is if we don't have a is to have an update. Currently, if you go and have a look at BGR BGR seven, it doesn't specify a specific number of years for inverters and for the different types of batteries. There's no specific write-off period for it. I am expecting that to come through in the next in um, in the next couple of months. Okay, simply because of the fact that we are going to have a lot more people who are claiming. And remember, though, that for eleven, if you're going eleven e, you have you have to straight line. You can't use 50, 30, 20. Because what you can do, though, is try and motivate for how long the batteries would last. Because also, there's a difference between your gel batteries, between your lithium ion batteries, be between your power walls, between your, <coughs> you know, the technology changes so often. And also your usage influences how, how, how quickly you will use up your batteries. So I would go and say that it's, I would put it as similar to your batteries. I would probably say similar to UPS. Now I've got lithium ion batteries with a projected, it is a projected useful life of a 10 year, of 10 years. I mean, my, mine are meant to be, um, mine are meant to be usable for 15 years if I look after them. So that's probably going to be a fairer reflection, which is why I actually go and say I do think this is, there is going to be more um, clarity coming on, coming into this space, because they're going to have to start addressing this and putting it in, because at the moment, the legally correct way is not actually just for us to guess, but for us to go and, go and apply to SARS and go and say, hi, I want to claim 11E on these items and I'm using this wear and tear rate. Do you agree? Yes, no. Okay. So please be very careful and please also remember you can only claim the 100% accelerated allowance if you are actually generating solar power. The inverter and batteries by themselves are not enough. From an apportionment point of view, the test is whether you are using them exclusively for trade or whether you are using them um, for trade and other purposes like with home office expenses, right? If you are having issues with, um, with SARS in terms of allowing it, also please bear in mind this is also new for them. So just because they've given you back the first time around doesn't mean that they're necessarily right. You need to just fight the system. And at some point, you need to, you need to be willing to actually go and take it to tax board. To go and say, guys, just because you don't think I should doesn't mean that what I'm doing is wrong. Don't be quite so frightened of tax board. Okay. Right. Uh, there's one question. The last question I'm going to take on solar is the 12B fund. Look, that 12B fund, I'm going to say I'd have to look a little bit more into exactly how they are um, selling the fund. Because from what I can gather, what they've done with that fund is that they've basically put it in as a you become a part owner of the system. So you would get a portion of the allowance in your initial year of investment, and then you would get a, a almost like a part in a partnership basis. That's my understanding. But look, it's I think there's still going to be quite a bit of detail coming out on that. I mean, that's just been the marketing blurb. I haven't actually seen the underlying documents. But there's definitely a lot of people going to be jumping on this bandwagon. And there's already been indicators in the news that it's going to be addressed in the budget speech. So I'm expecting some movement tomorrow. Okay. Right. What about the VAT? Right. Can you claim the input VAT? 
to the extent that it is being used in your enterprise. All right, so the problem that you're going to have with a lot of your solar panels and the rest is that, especially if it's a pure home office system, is that the production, the assets would attach to the house. So you would have to be able to show that the solar actually is, does form part of your enterprise. In which case then you could. I think for home office, it's going to be a little bit more challenging uh, because of the fact that it's dual, dual use. Not impossible, but challenging. Um, but definitely for your for anything where you can show that it's sep it's a separate building or it's like a, on a separate granny flat or something like that, it'll be a lot easier to make the argument for the input VAT claim. Okay. Uh, 